Hey, in this tutorial we'll configure our SAML plugin together with the user sync functionality in Okta. We'll use our user sync functionality to synchronize users into the Atlassian application via Okta's API and then use SAML to authenticate those users um, via single sign-on. We'll first start off um, configuring the user sync part so that we get the user accounts into the um, Atlassian application. Uh, for that, we create an API token on Okta, configure our user sync connector, uh, and test it, see that it works. Afterwards, we'll look at authentication so that we um, configure the SAML integration on the Okta side, then finish our plugins configuration for the authentication and test it all together. So this is my demo instance. Um, you can see I currently only have one user in there, the administrator. And now we'll configure um, the user sync functionality to synchronize users um, into the application. So let's start off with user sync. And user sync has the concept of connectors. So every API for an identity provider that we implemented um, is a connector here. You see we have the most common ones. Here we want to configure Okta. And by the way, you can have multiple um, uh, connectors to the same IDP or IDP type. So if you have two instances in Okta, for example, um, you can uh, synchronize both instances into here. For the tutorial, we'll just have one. So let's create Okta here. And now the connector needs to have um, essentially two main settings done. First is the Okta domain. I'm just gonna quickly copy that over from Okta. So let's move over. I'm gonna copy the domain part here of the Okta instance and paste it here. And the next thing it wants is an API token so that it can access the API. That needs to be a token from an administrator and let's just quickly create that in Okta. So going back here, I'm logged in as an admin but I'm not on the admin portal yet so I click admin here. That gets me to the Okta admin portal. Here I need to go to security, scroll down, API, and then onto the tab tokens. Now I can say create token. Needs to have a name, make it something that you can find it again if you want to revoke it at some point. Let's say create token, and I can copy the token. Okay, got it. And that's pretty much it, what we have to do in Okta for the uh, user sync part. So let's go back to our plugin, paste in the API token. And that's fundamentally everything we need to do to be able to synchronize with our uh, base settings. Still, I want to show you a couple more settings that you could do, um, but I'm not gonna explain them in detail. So if you have any questions, um, look at our documentation, reach out to support or schedule a screen share session uh, because um, these configuration can be relatively um, individual and there can't be a tutorial for every possible combination. So the first one I want to explain a little bit is required Okta groups. If you specify a group name or a couple of group names there um, from your Okta instance, then only users in that group will be synchronized into um, uh, Jira. So if you have, for example, on Okta a Jira users group, and you only want those users synchronized, then specify that um, group here. And it needs to be a group or group name from the Okta instance, um, since we check that via the API. Good, uh, let's go to provisioning settings um, just quickly. Um, there's a bit more that can help you, like the copy behavior with migrations of existing users, uh, or if you want to always assign a certain group to, um, to every user. There's also the potential to um, configure additional attribute mapping. So if you have more information in Okta, like uh, phone numbers, manager names, and those kind of things, you can add um, those mappings here. Um, and there's also a section about group management. There's also a video about group management. Uh, by default, our connector treats um, Okta as the single source of truth for groups. So if a user is in a group in Okta, it will um, uh, replicate that into Jira. If you assign a group manually in Jira and that user is not part of the group in Okta, it will get removed on the next sync. Um, but you can control that with those settings here. So if you, for example, um, want to filter some groups that only some groups from uh, Okta come in, 
or that some groups are treated as local groups, other groups are managed by the IDP, then you can do that with the settings here. But have a look at the um, video in, in the portal and also reach out to us uh, if you have any questions. That can probably be the most complicated part of setting up UserSync, uh, depending on your um, exact requirements. So I'm going to go to the last tab, which is Sync Settings, um, just quickly. Um, here's the possibility to turn on scheduled synchronization, which I'm going to do now. By default, we synchronize once an hour, which is fine for small and medium-sized instances. If you have very large um, Okta user bases, let's say tens of thousands of users, then you might want to tone that down a little bit. Um, but feel free to reach out for, um, to us uh, if you want to have some good best, uh, best practice advice here. Let's say save and return now. And then let's kick off a synchronization manually for the moment. And now you see it's um, uh, running and it's starting to add users uh, into the application. I think we have some 900 or 1000 users in that demo instance, so it will take a couple of minutes to synchronize them all in. Um, but that's what UserSync does. Okay, you can see it's done with success. 835 users have been synchronized in. You can also see some of the messages, um, but essentially zero users failed. All fine here. Let's close this and just have a look at the um, user management section again. And now you can see there's a lot of users having been synchronized in um, from the um, Okta into the new Okta directory. And behind the scenes to show you that as well, um, UserSync actually for every connector configured, it creates a um, additional internal directory that behaves like any other internal directory in Jira. So it uh, adheres to the directory search order. You can just use it like any other directory that you are used to in Jira. Um, and that's where the users get synchronized into from Okta. So now that we have the users in um, Okta, uh, in, in the Jira application, we now need to take care of authentication. For that, we're gonna go to SAML single sign on, the SAML part of our plugin. And once you go there for the first time, it shows you the getting started wizard. So let's add a new identity provider. Select Okta, that already does a lot of pre-configuration. And then we can go to next. And now it shows us um, the information we need to configure the SAML part of um, Okta. So let's copy our single sign-on URL and then move back to Okta. So here we are. Now we need to go to Applications, create an app integration, and that's going to be a SAML 2.0 app. Say Next. Need to give it a good name. Um, that name is actually going to be shown on the user's dashboard. Um, so select a good name and maybe also um, uh, choose a sensible logo here. Go to next. And then we need to paste the single sign on URL here and the audience URI, which is um, the same with the default settings. And that's um, um, most thing that we have to do on the um, um, SAML settings. Everything else we can leave as default. We don't need to add any additional attributes since they are all synchronized in via user sync. So let's say next here. It's always gonna ask a, um, a survey here. So I'm gonna be a customer adding an internal app and say finish. Um, and now that app has been created and we're in the settings of the app. So there's two things we need to do here. One is to copy the identity provider metadata down here. So I'm gonna copy that uh, link address. And that gives us the metadata link that we can use in our plugin to load a lot of the Okta configuration straight into the plugin that you don't have to do that via cut and paste. The other thing that we have to do is assignments. If I go there. Um, essentially, Okta wants to know which users or groups of users um, can actually see this app on their dashboard and are allowed to use it um, to sign in via SAML. That doesn't mean they all have application access. That you still control on Jira via something like the Jira users groups or the application access groups. 
This is more the setting on the Okta side, uh, which users will see the app in their dashboard and are also um, allowed to use SAML to authenticate. So I'm going to make that relatively easy. I'm going to uh, make that a group and I'm going to take the everyone group here. So everyone in my organization can use this app to sign into Jira. Let's say done. And that's essentially it on Okta. So let's go back to our plugin to finish uh, off the configuration. Let's go to next here, paste the metadata URL and then we can say import. And you see import was successful, so let's go to next. In this um, screen of the wizard, it uh, essentially asks if the usernames and the um, if the usernames are the same on Okta as in um, Jira. In our example, they are because we synchronized them in user sync and didn't apply any transformations. Um, if you would need any transformations or any changes, you could uncheck that here and configure it here. Uh, but for our tutorial, they're both the same on both sides. Let's go to next. Now it's asking us about the um, provisioning features of our plugin. Um, so to create an update users, um, we're going to choose here um, update with user sync connector. And then we can select the octa connector that we created earlier on. You could leave it to none uh, and it would still work. But what this update with users and connector um, does is whenever a user logs in, we make an API call to update that user's information uh, from, uh, from Okta during the login. That can be very useful if you don't run your sync very often. For example, if you have a large instance and only run it overnight, it makes sure that the um, user's information is always up to date as of the point of the login. So that's a, the most recommended um, uh, solution to set that here as well. Let's go to save and next then. And we're finished with the part of the setup. So now we come to the part where we actually test our settings. So let's go to start here. That creates what we call an authentication tracker. And the authentication tracker is something that we've created which keeps a lot of information about a um, authentication altogether. So um, the SAML message, some response, etc. What we'll do here is we'll copy the special URL and open that in an incognito window uh, where we're not authenticated yet. That then gets us to Jira, redirects us to Okta so that we can log in. And then we will see the results of that login uh, in this authentication um, tracker. So let's give that a try then. I'm going to open an incognito window, paste that URL gets me um, to Jira and then to Okta. Let me authenticate with my test user. And then you see it's saying sign into Jira and redirects us back to Jira. And here we can see our first start wizard because that's the first time we logged in with that demo user. So it all worked from that perspective. However, let's go back to our plugin. And you can actually see the authentication tracker as a success. Um, the user ID logged in is see a local one address solution, the status is logged in. And if you scroll down here, you see there's a lot more debugging messages, etc. cetera, um, down here. Um, the summer um, authentication request, the summer response, the um, HTTP request info, lots of data here. You don't need that right now once it was successful, but if you run into any problems, for example, then this data can be very helpful for the troubleshooting side of things. And if you need any help, you have the contact support button here. And with that, you can open a um, request in our Jira service management and attach this tracker straight away so that we have all the information that you see on your screen and can usually help you quite quickly identify any issues um, that you may have during the setup. But it's been a success for us, so let's go to next. And this is the last screen of the wizard. Um, so far, nothing we have done has interfered with users' authentication. They still got their normal username and password prompt. Um, and if you now want to redirect them to Okta for login, you can say enable SSO redirect here and say save and close. And then every user is going to get sent to Okta to authenticate. Or alternatively, um, if you want to do that in a, during a maintenance window, get more people to test, 
um, give them a good announcement, then you can leave that off and you can always come back in, um, say, safe and close, and then uh, can come back to the plugin settings later into the redirection tab and turn the redirection on uh, at a later point in time. So I leave it on here, say save and close. And that means we're essentially finished with this wizard. I hope um, you got something out of this tutorial and um, liked it. However, let me say one thing. Um, this setup in most cases is relatively straightforward. But if you have any requirements that are a little bit out of the ordinary, having to change usernames on the fly, have to map more attributes and that stuff, and you can't find the information straight away in our documentation, then please reach out uh, to us. You can schedule a free screen share session with us where we can actually help you with the configuration um, um, live during a Zoom screen share. Um, or you can open a um, service request in our Geo Service Management um, where we can also answer your questions and get your problem resolved. That's what we're here for and we're really looking forward to hear from you. Thanks.